I'll get shit done. I have fun. It's my time and I'm the one. I'm breaking through. Hello and welcome. I'm Coach Phil. Uh, avoid left turns? What if you did stop making left-hand turns? We'll be uh, addressing that question, pondering it for a little bit, and I'll share where the inspiration came from to me the other day. So um, if you're watching this live, thank you for being here. Appreciate you uh, greatly. If you're watching it um, on a replay because you're in a different part of the world or your schedule doesn't allow you to catch us at this time of the day, evening or morning, um, just let us know, hashtag replay where you are watching it from, and uh, feedback is welcome, good, bad, and, yeah, the ugly, because that's how we get better. So on that note, I want to do a shameless plug for uh, what I do, Focal Point Business Coaching. And also, what if you um, stopped, thought about the ripple effect that your product that you sell and represent makes in the world that you uh, live in? I was thinking about that, and it's amazing the impact we have uh, on different people in a positive way with the products and services we make available and solve problems for people, make their life a little bit better. In some cases, we make um, what what our products and services do have a massive impact on individuals. So I just wanted to talk about that today. I was inspired by a conversation I was having with a, a mentor, friend, client, uh, partner, and we were talking about a number of different things that, out of that conversation, the mastermind principle, two minds together, things come out of that. What came out of that was a reminder of a fellow that I had run into in my sales career over the years. Uh, I was a new and used car sales guy once upon a time. And some of the things you hear about the stereotypical sellers in that space are true, but that's the minority and particularly in today's market. There, there's still a few there, but Anyway, this gentleman, Jackie B. Cooper, was an amazing fellow from um, the U.S., I think Southern um, South Carolina, actually, I think is where he was from. Anyway, um, because we were in the industry of selling cars, he was trying to get us to understand the impact we had at that time, which led me to want to share that today. And what I'm getting at is if you think about, uh, you know, the alphabet, 26 uh, letters, for every letter of the alphabet, there's somebody's life is impacted by the manufacturing and the selling of an automobile, whether it be a car, truck, or um, anything like that. Uh, in the auto industry, um, A would be could be an alternator, so people who manufacture alternators and all the bits and pieces and the ripple effect to that little component of the car. There could be the steel factories and the and the mining companies that are getting the materials so that the cars can be built. Be built. Um, B for uh, battery, C for cloth, or um, right. um, what's a cup holder, <laughs> right? A cup holder starts with C. Uh, D would be um, um, differential, right? And it could go on even Z for my American friends and Z for uh, non-Americans, Canadians and English, uh, maybe in Aussies, um, is a zipper. I mean, there's zippers in cars to put things uh, like the um, material that goes over the, the seat. S, seat, 
S stereo. So in your industry, in your products and in your services, what are the things that you're having uh, that are have that what you sell uh, provide has an impact outside of the people we serve and support directly, like a client or a customer, but things that happen um, in my industry, being in a coaching training facilitation space. A um, couple of things that come to mind for me is working with um, other coaches. One in particular is a brilliant technician in terms of um, knowing what to do, how to do it uh, as, a, as a coach and his area of expertise, but not showing up on a consistent basis so that he could support his family with the revenue and financial wherewithal that is required to do that. So after working together for about 10 months, he was able to find a way to get his brilliance out there because he is brilliant. So working with that guy gave me an opportunity to have an impact on helping him get to another level. And getting to that other level, um, like he he did like well over 750% more than he did prior to that over a 10 month period, he, he was able to get there. And what came out of that for him was he was able to serve and show up and help people that needed his expertise and his talents. And one of the things he was asked to do while the CEO of a client of his, because now he stepped out and grew, grew his business and showed up in his brilliance, uh, the CEO fell ill and his wife of the CEO reached out to this particular client of mine and asked him if he would be the acting CEO while her husband uh, um, dealt with a health, health issue. That wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the ripple effect. What's the ripple effect that you're having on the people that you serve? Think about that. What's um, For me, A would be attitude, B would be uh, belief, C would be um, taking on challenges. D would be um, learning that dissatisfaction is a good thing and without dissatisfaction, nothing happens. That's what I help people do. And the ripple effect is uh, the story I've just shared. Another one was a single mom with three kids, hates winter, owns a business, but didn't want to hang out in the winter, was sick and tired of that. Her wish crazy dream, she called it at the time, was to be able to take her business and um, get out of the frigidness of winter for at least six months of the year. And in eight months or, or thereabouts, she was able to make a plan and started living that life. Um, now it's, it's she doesn't live in the winter at all anymore. She lives full time in a tropical paradise. So anything's possible. Not everything is, but not everything is. I, Recognizing what it is you do in terms of the ripple effect you have on people's lives, um, it helps me wake up in the morning with a bounce in my step before I even get out of bed. That's how powerful it is, recognizing the impact that you have in the world that you serve. Um, I also said avoid turning, making left-hand turns. So Jackie B. Cooper, who I started talking about earlier, uh, I was a participant at one of his programs when I was in the car industry. And what I learned from him was a lot of stuff. And it was about avoiding making left turns. Now, if you're selling cars or vehicles, it's a really good idea to avoid left-hand left -hand turns because there's a higher probability of having an accident. So we created a, um, a demonstration route that only had right-hand turns as often as possible so that uh, nobody was at risk. Because in the new car, things are new and people are at that, they're not as, comfortable driving a new vehicle as they are what they were currently driving. So just uh, assist in that area of safety and in, in, in being in a car with people that uh, don't, know the, don't know the car as well as uh, they will once they buy it or own it or the car they own already own. So <clears throat> in your life, what are some of the left-hand turns that you might want to avoid to uh, mitigate for risks that are going to get in your way? I'm not saying don't take risks. But could you make a right-hand turn to get there instead of a left-hand turn, strategically thinking? And what if you did stop doing that? And what if you did take, not the easy route, I'm not suggesting that, although there is an interesting book called uh, You Squared by Pritchett Price. And the very first story he talks about in that philosophy of his book is uh, doing things the hard way is not necessarily the best way. Think of the fly trying to get out of the house. 
bashing itself against the window. And the only thing that happens is it gets tired or gets exhausted and you end up picking up off the windowsill a few days later if he's still around. So hard is not always the best strategy. Uh, I do have a couple of banners here. So this is what we're just talking about, avoiding the uh, left-hand turns in your career, in your life. What are they? What did you do to uh, uh, reduce the risk but still stay on track to get to where you're trying to get to? What are your left-hand turns that might be getting in the way of um, your success? And what could you do to avoid them? The other thing that uh, Jackie B. Cooper introduced to me was this thing called the evidence manual. And I have another acronym beside that called DEFEATS, and both of them together are a very powerful thing. And what I found was the evidence manual is proof of who you are and how you show up. And I'm not suggesting you have a, a manual, and, um, and I'm not suggesting that a manual works in every situation because you're not always able to share it with people. However, with social media, there's places that you can show up and be authentic and people can see what you're all about. Um, get a deeper understanding of what you what you do, why you do it, and who you hang out with, um, who you're connected with, those kind of things. That's really what an evidence manual is. Um, and then Defeats is kind of supports that. I learned this from another organization in my sales training program, and it's actually an acronym that um, provides uh, evidence, so a demonstration, example, facts, um, exhibit, analogy, you know, an anecdotal story, testimonials, and statistics. The st stats could be a, a case study or a white paper, white paper, pardon me, or something like that. And then this one here is another acronym. Um, it's TTAPS, and it's, uh, it's a way to position yourself and actually be a really effective time management tool. So if you set up an appointment to meet with somebody, you thank them, you confirm that you have the time. And, you know, sometimes people's lives change from when you set the schedules. Oh, what you end up doing is, uh, well, if you use TTAPs, what you end up doing is you confirm that you still have the time. And they may confirm it in, they, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, five minutes, whatever the time was, they confirm that. Or they say they apologize because they something came up and they, don't have the time, but end up rescheduling it. Now, I've taught this in my sales communication breakthrough training program to everybody that goes through the program because it's one of the aspects of it. And what they found was it was a game changer. And the other thing it does is the P is for permission. So when we get on the other side of this meeting, uh, you know, some people um, may not want to go ahead and they're really kind people and they just don't want to hurt my feelings. So uh, they, they said, put it off. They say, I want to think about it. Or it's the maybe thing. So what we want in the leadership roles as a seller, a salesperson, or an uh, entrepreneur, or any person that's got an idea that was trying to lobby for people to join them, is we just want a yes or a no. We don't want the maybes. The maybe's like the cat and mouse. Uh, the, the person we're talking to becomes the mouse, we're the cat. And because they don't want to hurt our feelings, we're playing this silly game. It's really a huge time suck so by having permission and how we do that i'll just give you a quick run through is so when we get on the other side of this meeting would it be okay if you'd be okay with saying uh no or yes with this right and then explain it about the yes or about the maybe pardon me we don't want maybes they are really a waste of time so if you do that it's going to increase your effect, efficiency and effectiveness, and it's going to get, save you a ton of time. And it also takes the pressure off in the sales conversation because the person on the other side of this presentation that you might be doing goes, I don't have to buy this if it's not a good fit. And I've seen that over and over and over. So it's an amazing sort of tool. So that's what I wanted to do to help you understand where I'm coming from, what the ripple effect is that we have, what to do in terms of avoiding left turns and why does that even make sense? And um, I'm passionate about selling because to me, selling is showing up and serving, making somebody's life a little bit better because of the product or service. And in some cases, it's not just a little bit better, it's a shitload, a lot better. So uh, let's see who popped in here and made a comment. It's my buddy, Ron Goodwin. Now there's a guy who's passionate and probably doesn't do many left-hand turns uh, in terms of uh, taking crazy risks when you can avoid them. Um, 
he's an interesting dude. And thank you for popping in, Ron Goodwin. Good to see you, my friend. So that brings us to the end of the business reader, business. I can't even talk today. The business renovator today, and um, with that, I would just like to remind you about this, and that is to um, be like the you and wonderful, because you are wonderful. Now go act like it. Have a great day. I get shit done, I have fun, it's my time and